Okay, so we should be looking at page 330. Um, remember yesterday we started talking about these major cities in the Southeast regions. Um, quick question about Washington, D.C. Is Washington, D.C. in a state? No. 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 It is not. Remember, it's its own thing. It's its own D.C. standing for District of Columbia. It's not a state and it is not part of any state. It's a district. So remember that when we talk about Washington, D.C. So our heading here today, the big bold letters at the top of page 330 says, of the people, by the people, and for the people. So we've talked about how in the Southeast region, it's very varied, okay? Weird. It's different. Everybody's different. It looks different. The states are different. We've got mountain. I mean, I'm not just talking about you and I and the different people that live here. I'm talking about how the states are so different. You can be in the mountains and at the beach in the same day living in the Southeast region. You can be in a place like Louisiana that's got all sorts of French influence on it. You could also go up into Kentucky or Tennessee and be on all these beautiful plains and these farmlands. Travel a little further east and you've got the Appalachian Mountains. Travel a little further south and you've got the beaches and the swamps. So the Southeast region is very varied. Um, they share a lot of similarities, but they also share a lot of differences. The Southeast is also very religious. We've talked about this a little bit. Um, there are, are many Bible-believing Christians here. And the Southeast is often called the Bible Belt. Many people in the Bible Belt are Baptist, Methodist, or Presbyterian. And remember when we talked about the Northeast region? Um, there's more Roman Catholic than there is Protestant in the uh, Northeast region. Well, here in the Southeast region, we have a lot of Protestant churches. Um, the cities and towns in these states have lots of churches. How many guys of you guys have ever noticed that when you're driving around Jacksonville, you know, you could be driving from here down to the south side of Jacksonville and you pass a lot of churches. Have y'all ever noticed that there are a lot of churches in Jacksonville? Well, that's largely how it is in the southeast. It's the Bible Belt. You're going to see a lot of churches in these towns. There's a lot of religious emphasis in Southern life that comes from the seeds planted during, we go back to it, the Great Awakening, that series of revivals back when, um, back post the Puritans and the Pilgrims settling in the New World, there was all those revivals because they wanted to make sure that their families were going to continue to seek God. Um, there are some parts of the Southeast that are more firmly Roman Catholic. There are cities like Miami and cities like New Orleans that have many Roman Catholics and this is because of their French and Spanish past. We talked about how New Orleans has that really major French influence. Well, Miami, down south of Florida, they have a very big Spanish influence. And the French and the Spanish are still heavily Roman Catholic. So we see more of those types of churches in those areas. Mm -hmm. um, politically, the southeast has been called the solid state. In recent history, the solid state became solid for Republicans. Remember when we talked about the Northeast and we looked at that little table and all of those Northeast states for the past 20 years, except for one time, have voted democratically. And that's just I, no right or wrong. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. That's just solid numbers. It tells you the Northeast states typically tend to vote democratically. Here in the South, we see that they vote more solid for the Republicans. And this could probably change again in the future because people will move around our country and people move around a lot more now than they ever have before. I know a lot of you aren't necessarily from right here in Jacksonville. Some of you are, some of you aren't. A lot of people move around. So the whole idea and the whole landscape of things can change based on people moving around. Um, as cities grow, many people move with different political opinions. For instance, many people have moved to Northern Virginia to work in Washington, D.C. Now, Northern Virginia tends to be more blue than the rest of the state. People in the Southeastern United States are known for their hospitality, politeness, and good manners are important. Children are often taught to say yes, sir, and yes, ma'am. How many of you taught, how many of you were taught growing up to say yes, ma'am, and yes, sir, no, sir, no, all of those. Um, I know that you are because I know your mama, so you don't have to raise your hand, but I know that you are. So, a little story about that. Um, I used to be a nanny. I used to take care of a couple of little kids, and their mom and dad were born out in uh, Minnesota and Wisconsin, so out in the Midwest, which we'll talk about the Midwest. They have different customs. 
I was always raised to say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir, because it was polite and it was respectful. And I started nannying these kids and they would never say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. And I was like, these kids just say yes or okay to me. And I don't understand that. Why are they not being respectful? Well, it turns out they weren't raised that way because their parents weren't raised that way because they have different customs and traditions in the Midwest. So I learned that not everybody's raised that way, which is why my policy in my class is if you, uh, if you have to say something to me, you say yes, ma'am, or okay, because I know we don't all say it. So we are kind of taught those things. Um, also, don't forget, little reminder, we have the red states and the blue states. We've got the Democrats and the Republicans. Remember, blue states are Democratic, red states are Republican. So don't forget about that for when we see that terminology. Um, let's look at page 331. Um, we also see family ties are a very important part of the way of life in this region. How many of you guys are close with your family? And I'm not just talking like, it's good to be close with your immediate family, but I'm not just talking like your mom, dad, your sisters. I'm talking aunties, cousins, people that aren't even related to you that you call family. How many of we've got that going on? Okay, same. I'm like that too. And y'all look around the room. We're all different, but we all pretty much have that in common. We're all here in the South and we're all really tight with a pretty large family. Um, so we think family ties are very important. Let's make sure we're not clicking and clacking. It just makes my, my I, get, I get really distracted, okay? Um, people in the Southeast, they often value tradition. They know that there is much wisdom in the way that people lived in the past, and they do not think problems are solved by changing everything about the way people live. People who live in the Southeast have a long heritage. Some of these states were the first to enter the United States, and some were among the first to be explored. Slavery and the Civil War are sad parts in the history of this region. Segregation is another sad truth, but there are also happy parts. The Great Awakening was a time of God's blessings. Churches have grown in this part of the country. Strong family and community ties are good, are another good part of Southern life. The Southeast is a region with a rich past and a bright future. So why do we think that the people in the Southeast value tradition? Beautiful? Uh, because that's how they were raised. That's how they were raised and they see wisdom in that. Jenilise, please stop. Thank you. Let's pick your head up. Thank you. Yeah, it's how that they're raised, and they see wisdom in how they're raised. They're thinking, okay, I was raised right, so I'm going to continue to do what I've seen. I'm going to follow these traditions. Why do the people who live in the Southeast have a long heritage? It talks about it. It says people in the Southeast have a long heritage. It starts the second paragraph. Janelise? Oh, because of the... <gasps> Sorry. 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 Yeah, I'm going to let Ronald pick it up. Sorry. You're fine. <laughs> yeah, okay, so some of them were the first states to even enter the United States. They were the very beginning, so that's a long heritage. Some of them were the first to explore. <laughs> Somebody yesterday said St. Augustine when we were talking about mm -hmm. old cities. So they call uh, the area that we're in the first coast because St. Augustine was founded so many hundreds of years ago. And that's a long heritage. I mean, that fort's been sitting there since the 1400s. And there are many parts of St. Augustine that have been sitting there since the 1400s. That's wild, okay? So we've got a long heritage here in the South. Uh, what are some sad parts in the history of the Southeast region? Beautiful? The Civil War was absolutely a sad part. And we are fighting the Civil War because of one thing that we didn't all agree on. Do you know what that is? Civil rights, yes, but I'm that's more in the 1960s. I'm thinking more of then. Slavery. Slavery. So, yeah, civil rights we did fight for later, and we had Martin Luther King Jr., and we continue to fight civil, so for civil rights every single day. But specifically, in the time of the Civil War, they were fighting to abolish slavery because they thought that every man should be created equal because every man was created equal. Guys, if you took me and turned me inside out right now, my insides will look the same as beautiful. It's not about what is on my skin. It's about what's inside my heart. Am I a good person? Am I following Christ? Am I treating my neighbors kindly? Am I doing the right thing? Am I making good choices? Don't do that, please. So slavery was a very sad part in the South's past, but we were able to abolish slavery. And many good things have happened in the South since then. 
So our little question of the day was, where did the religious emphasis in the South come from? What was the big event that so all those revivals started it? The Great, the Great Awakening. Very good. Very good. So go ahead and open up your uh, workbook to page 153, 154. We're going to look at page 154 first so we can go over it together as a class. Um, and then you guys are going to look at... 153 on your own so work on some of your math skills so make sure you get to 154 and yes you may tear it out because we're going to be taking this page up today so go ahead and tear that page out i'm gonna flip the camera so we're not going crazy 